Yes, good morning, everyone. Am I audible to all? Good morning, sir. Yes, good morning. So if you if you remember, if you remember, we have studied up to the point of thyroid in a head region, three glands, pineal, pituitary, and hypothalamus in a neck region, thyroid and parathyroid. And now we are reaching to the chest region, thoracic cavity, where we will study thymus. So thymus gland as an endocrine gland. Look at the position of thymus. A lobular structure, structure which is having lobes in it. So a lobular structure which is lying just over the ventral side of pericardium and the aorta, very close to the heart. Of course, aorta must be rising from this particular point in this region, just above to the lobular structure lying molded over the ventral side of the pericardium and aorta, very close to the heart, just above the heart, in the thoracic cavity between above the heart and over near the aorta. Is behind aorta pass hota hai, arise hota hai, behind this thymus. The hormone that is secreted called Thymosines. The hormone secreted is thymosine. Actually, thymosines, it's a similar hormones, thymosines. Let us see the effects of thymosines. For the development of immune system. Our immune functions depend upon thymus. Thymus is responsible for the development of our immune system. So you know the fact that immune system, I give it some background of the immune system. The system which is meant for our protection against uh, pathogenic attack. This immune system performs with the help of its components. One of the component, one of these components is WBC. And amongst the WBC, the main players are lymphocytes. We can consider the lymphocytes as the uh, most valuable, most important player which provide us resistance and protection against pathogens, microorganisms. So they are the main players of our immune system. These lymphocytes are born in bone marrow. Just like other WBCs, these are also prepared in the bone marrow. There are two possibilities. Because all lymphocytes are produced in bone marrow, so it's not the birth site for them. It's a site where they develop and mature that determines the types of lymphocytes. We got two categories. B lymphocytes, which are called B cells, and T lymphocytes, which are called T cells. B lymphocytes are those which are born in bone marrow and are matured in bone marrow. Whereas T lymphocytes are born in bone marrow. After that, they come out in the bloodstream, go to the thymus gland, get matured over there, and again come out in the bloodstream to perform their functions. Those are identified as T cells. So we got B cells and T cells, two important categories 
of WBC. How they perform in our system? B cells are the ones which directly kill the pathogens. No, they, they don't, uh, rather, they prepare antibodies, rather, which help in removal of the antigens. So with the help of antibodies, they tackle the antigens. The type of immunity they provide, it is identified as antibody or you may call it as a humoral immunity. Dusra name antibody mediated immunity. On the other hand, the T cells are the ones which directly kill the, you know, pathogen. What they provide is known as cell mediated immunity. These are the two different forms of the, you know, our immune system. For dealing with certain pathogen, it requires humoral immunity. While dealing with the other pathogens, it requires cell-mediated immunity. Also to deal with cancer cells and some other antigens and pathogens, it requires the cell-mediated immunity. So the two different types of immunities are required in our system. One is provided by B cell and another one is provided by the T cell. This was a background which you should have been aware of in order to understand the role of thymosis. Now, if I take you to this drive, overall development of immune system, for that thymosins play a significant role. Also, they play the significant role in the differentiation and maturity of T lymphocytes. Now you must be able to understand what I'm talking about. It's the same lymphocytes which were born in bone marrow, then came out in blood, via blood went into the thymus for maturity and differentiation. So here they get differentiated and ready to provide you cell-mediated immunity, which can directly kill the pathogen. Not only that, but the thymosines also promote production of antibodies. For that, they have to stimulate which cells, B lymphocytes. What they produce are antibodies, which facilitate removal of pathogen. This form of immunity is also identified as humoral immunity. So in a way, thymosines help in establishment of cell-mediated immunity as well as humoral immunity. So overall immunity, that credit goes to the thymus. And because of this, you know, one interesting development uh, take, takes place in the life of, of an individual. That in our childhood and early ages, not childhood, at least you can say the adulthood stages, early, early adulthood stages, when we attain maturity, 14, 15 years plus. That's the time when thymus gland size is large. So at that time, our immune power is maximum because it contributes in immunity and its size is large. It is functioning properly. Immune power is at its best. As the age progresses and we become older, the thymus reduces its size. Thymus ki size mein reduction hota hai. Usko atrophication hai. Thymus atrophy takes place. As its size decreases, its functions decline. And this is how our immunity also declines as the age progresses. In this uh, COVID, uh, post COVID-19 phase, we, we all have realized that everybody is vulnerable, but particularly old age people are more vulnerable to such damage caused by such corona and other viral attacks. 
the main reason behind that is after an old age the thymus size decreases so much and its functions are declined too much that your immune powers are compromised your immune power is greatly reduced so that is the problem regarding the weak immunity in the old individual well any question on the same do you have any no, question sir. fine so we move to the next one before i go to the next uh, I, if i ask you something which is the only endocrine gland in the thoracic region of the body thymus because thyroid is in the neck not in the thorax which are the hormones secreted by the thymus thymosines yes mainly thymus helps in uh, development of which system of our body overall development of which system of our body immune system exactly very good reply kids well done which cells differentiate in thymus which help in providing immunity shreya wrong fatima correct galo incomplete answer t lymphocytes always remember t lymphocytes b lymphocytes never differentiate into thymus always remember t thymus ke upar se usko t lymphocyte kaha jata hai jo lymphocyte thymus mein mature hote hain unko t lymphocyte kaha jata hai you remember that way those which are born in bone marrow and differentiated in bone marrow are the b lymphocytes those which are born in bone marrow and differentiated in thymus are called t lymphocytes t stands for thymus what pattern of immunity is been offered by the t lymphocytes in our system in our body yes jugal right cell mediator and what about the b lymphocyte role what sort of immunity galav is correct humoral immunity antibody mediated immunity humoral immunity what is the one reason why in old individuals immune system becomes weak yes you will but then mention further atrophy atrophy of thymus yes so you are right chaliye head mein kitne endocrine glands teen hypothalamus pituitary and pineal neck mein kitne endocrine glands proper endocrine glands to thyroid and parathyroid which endocrine gland in the thorax thymus is correct now upper part of abdomen has two one is pancreas and another one is adrenal and lower pelvis region has got one in a male testes and in a female ovaries let's talk about abdominal region upper abdominal region in that first that is the pancreas this is the position of pancreas in the body below the diaphragm that means it must be in the abdominal region abdominal cavity this is the liver as you can see just below that close to the stomach here is your 
irregular shaped lobular gland is called pancreas. The position of pancreas. This is the one. बोलिए पैंक्रियास का पोजीशन क्लियर है तो फिर आगे जाते हैं द द द एनाटॉमिकल फीचर्स यू आर अवेयर ऑफ बिकॉज इट्स अ टॉपिक रिलेटेड विद दैट चैप्टर नंबर 16 डाइजेस्टिव सिस्टम सो वेयर यू मस्ट हैव लर्नड अबाउट दोस फीचर्स आई एम नॉट गोइंग टू गो इन इन डिटेल ऑफ दोस थिंग्स लेट मी टॉक अबाउट द पैंक्रियास a composite gland what do you mean by pancreas being a composite gland anyone hernia bolie galo sir it acts as both exocrine and endocrine gland what is the exocrine secretion of it sir uh, we have hormones like uh, I said exocrine there. Yeah, various uh, enzymes uh, like uh... enzymes. Exactly, pancreatic juice which contains digestive enzymes and salts and what, isn't it? What about the endocrine functions of it? It releases hormones. Which hormones it releases? Insulin. exactly so let us understand its composite nature the only gland endocrine gland which is composite it has both components exocrine and endocrine now out of this two which one secretes its secretion directly in the blood exocrine structures or endocrine structures they pour their secretion into the blood straight away which one is that endocrine portion that is the insulin and glucagon hormones directly secreted into blood by its this portion and its exocrine portion releases pancreatic juice which is poured into the duct that makes it exocrine remember this one let's try and understand the internal features of this gland when you take a anatomical section you find that internally there are plenty of units plenty of units the units which are known as pancreatic acini major portion of our uh, you know pancreas is having these kind of pancreatic acini the tubular units which will secrete pancreatic juice this represents exocrine portion of the gland but the spaces in between this pancreatic acini where there are clusters of cells these clusters are known as islets of langerhans you see it looks like there is a sea the ocean of acini in which these islets of langerhans look like the islands jaise सी के अंदर आइलैंड्स होते हैं एवरीवेयर वाटर एंड इन बिटवीन फ्यू स्कैटर्ड आइलैंड्स होते हैं इन साइड द पैनक्रियाज इफ यू सी द हिस्टोलॉजिकल फीचर्स ऑफ द पैनक्रियाज यू फाइंड दैट थ्रू आउट देयर आर एसिनाई क्लस्टर्स ऑफ एसिनाई एंड इन बिटवीन एट फ्यू प्लेसेस यू फाइंड द क्लस्टर्स ऑफ सेल्स व्हिच आर नोन एज आइलेट्स ऑफ लैंगरहैंस but never under estimate them they are almost 1 or 2 million in number within the one pancreas ek pancreas ke andar 2 million means 20 lakhs such clusters can be there so these clusters of the endocrine cells are identified as islets of langerhans langerhans must have identified them and these are called as islets of langerhans it contributes up to 2% in the total pancreatic tissue let's say 98% are acini pancreatic acini the exocrine part and 2% are islets of langerhans the endocrine part of it 
within the islets of langerhans there are actually four different categories of cells let's say alpha cells are there in then there are beta cells there are delta cells alpha cells beta cells and delta cells different types of cells in the constitution of this islets of langerhans ek aur bhi category hai lekin syllabus mein nahi hai so i am not going in much detail now alpha cell secrete hormone called glucagon beta cell secrete a hormone called insulin and delta cell secrete a hormone called as somatostatin so basically in a composite endocrine in a composite gland named as pancreas having two different components in it 98% of the pancreatic tissue formed of exocrine components known as pancreatic acini which secrete pancreatic juice the remaining 2% component of the pancreas that is the endocrine component named as groups of cells named as islets of langerhans in each pancreas as many as 1 million to 2 million such clusters of endocrine cells each cluster having different categories of cells the alpha cells that secrete glucagon beta cells that secrete insulin and the delta cells secrete somatostatin let me explain to you the features the functions rather performed by this hormone starting with the first in that list the glucagon functions over there now let me tell you one thing before i go in detail of this individual hormones role one thing you please understand that your body requires certain level of glucose after your meal you take a food your glucose level shoots up then somehow it has to be brought to the normal required level from normal required level after certain hours your glucose starts going down again you need to bring it to the normal level basic point is that you need to you need to maintain your glucose blood glucose level up to certain point isse zyada jisko hyperglycemic condition kehte hain that is problematic more than required level of glucose can alter your system's functioning damages the system lower level to that that is known as is the glucose level lower to the required level will be actually called hypoglycemic status which is even more dangerous it can be damaging your brain and it can lead to collapsing of your body even so dono situations harmful hoti hai hyperglycemia जो थोड़ा लॉन्ग रन में इफेक्ट करता है और हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया जो इंस्टेंटली डैमेज कर सकता है तो आइधर वे यू आर इन अ ट्रबल इफ यू डू नॉट मेंटेन योर रिक्वायर्ड ग्लूकोज लेवल नाउ व्हेन योर योर आफ्टर मील योर योर ग्लूकोज लेवल शूट्स अप इन योर ब्लड स्ट्रीम इंसुलिन कम्स एंड ब्रिंग्स इट डाउन टू द नॉर्मल इंसुलिन कम्स एंड ब्रिंग्स इट डाउन टू द नॉर्मल whereas after certain hours of the meal your glucose level was maintained and gradually reduces after few hours 
another hormone comes in the picture known as glucagon which will bring that sugar level up to the normal it is the antagonistic role of this two and their interplay that brings the required sugar level in the system system mein sugar level maintain rakhna hai higher to the normal will be hyperglycemia at that time insulin will bring it down to normal and lower to the required is called hypoglycemic condition in which glucagon will come and bring it to normal can you tell me insulin is hyperglycemic hormone or hypoglycemic hormone exactly it is hypoglycemic hypo means lower glycemic is for sugar level in blood jo aapka sugar level ko higher se normal pe lata hai the one which brings your sugar level up to the normal from the higher level that is the insulin hypoglycemic hormone and what could be the term employed for the glucagon the one which is raising your sugar level from the low to the normal exactly it's the hyperglycemic one so it is the interplay of this two the hypoglycemic hormone insulin and hyperglycemic hormone glucagon it is this two which will bring it to the normal well with this background i can take you into that ride of pancreas functions particularly endocrine functions first hormone glucagon of course the source of this is alpha cells chemical nature of this hormone it is the peptide hormone chemically wo ek polypeptide chain hoti hai it is the hyperglycemic hormone jo blood ka sugar level rise karta hai the one which will rise the sugar level of the blood glucose level of the blood and in a way contribute in maintaining the normal blood glucose level how he does this job how he does this job so basically it will stimulate the glucagon it's going to stimulate the cell cell such as hepatocytes in which organ of the body one can see the cells known as hepatocytes liver liver cells are hepatocytes they have a stored food in them that is called glycogen they have a stored food in them which is called as glycogen so glycogen of the hepatocytes will be converted into glucose it will be converted into glucose under the influence of glucagon hormone glucagon will stimulate the hepatocytes to convert the glycogen into glucose ग्लाइकोजन का बेसिकली ब्रेकडाउन करना पड़ता है ग्लाइकोजन का ब्रेकडाउन इसको ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस कहते हैं विच विल इंक्रीज द शुगर लेवल इन ब्लड ऐसा इट रिड्यूस इज द सेल्युलर अपटेक ऑफ ग्लूकोज एंड यूटिलाइजेशन इट इज स्टॉपिंग द सेल्स फ्रॉम पिकिंग अप दी ग्लूकोज सो ब्लड ग्लूकोज लेवल राइजेस to the normal aisa isse opposite kaun sa hormone work karega tell me insulin insulin will be secreted by beta cells it's a hypoglycemic hormone it will stimulate the hepatocytes to convert the glucose into glycogen that is glycogenesis agar glycogen breakdown ko glycogenolysis kehte hain 
तो ग्लाइकोजन फॉर्मेशन को ग्लाइकोजिनेसिस कहते हैं तो इफ ग्लूकागॉन वॉज प्रमोटिंग ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस इंसुलिन विल प्रमोट ग्लाइकोजिनेसिस कन्वर्जन ऑफ शुगर इन टू ग्लूकोज इन टू ग्लाइकोजन and again in a way will help in maintaining the glucose homeostasis the required level of glucose to be maintained in the blood stream that is called glucose homeostasis both these hormones play a significant role in that act glucose homeostasis maintenance of required level of glucose in the blood that is called glucose homeostasis the way hepatocytes were stimulated by glucagon for glycogenolysis and release the sugar oppositely insulin will work on hepatocytes and will make them to pick up the glucose from blood and convert it into glycogen glycogenesis to dono oppositely work karte acha agar glucagon was reducing the cellular uptake of glucose like you know stopping the cells from picking up the glucose insulin will go opposite to that it will enhance the cellular uptake and utilization of glucose insulin will make your cells of the body to pick up the glucose from the blood so blood glucose level is reduced appropriately सो एक सेल्स को स्टॉप करता है ग्लूकोज पिकअप करने से दैट इज अ ग्लूकागॉन दूसरा उसका एग्जैक्ट ऑपोजिट फोर्स करता है सेल को टू पिकअप दी ग्लूकोज ओवर देयर नॉट ओनली दैट बट इंसुलिन आल्सो स्टिमुलेट्स द एडिपोसाइट्स हैव यू हर्ड अबाउट एडिपोसाइट्स ओवर देयर वेयर डू वी फाइंड द एडिपोस no idea well adipocytes are in adipose tissue as well as in areolar tissue they are storing the uh, they they basically store the lipids so insulin will stimulate the adipocytes to convert the sugars excess of sugars into fats hepatocytes mein wo stimulate karta hai conversion of sugars into glycogen but adipocytes mein yahi insulin induce karta hai conversion of sugar into fats so look at the functions of insulin number 1 it is a hypoglycemic hormone which will help in regulation of glucose homeostasis it will stimulate the hepatocytes to pick up the glucose and convert them into glycogen the glycogenesis it will stimulate the adipocytes to pick up the sugar and convert them into fats and store them it will stimulate the other cells of the body to pick up the sugar from the blood uptake of the sugar and then utilize them glucose ka utilization promote karta hai these are the functions performed by the insulin hormone have you all understood last but not the least the delta cells which secrete hypo which you know secrete a hormone similar to hypothalamus name name is somatostatin body mein do source hai jo somatostatin ko secrete karta hai ek uh, delta cells in pancreas and second is hypothalamus <laughs> do dono ka ek hi i mean the source of somatostatin these two are both are having same secretion that is the somatostatin so a common feature in ka somatostatin is a growth inhibitor abo pata hai na growth hormone 
का जो इनिबिटर होता है वो हाइपोथैलेमस में आता है वो तो यही है ग्रोथ हार्मोन रिलीज हार्मोन इनिबिटर है ये सो बेसिकली ग्रोथ इनिबिशन इज द जॉब ऑफ सोमैटोस्टेटी रिमेंबर दिस मैन दैट इज ऑल अबाउट द फंक्शंस ऑफ द हार्मोन सिक्रेटेड फ्रॉम पैनक्रियास Now, if I ask you about pancreas, which two hormones play primary role in glucose homeostasis of the body? Exactly, insulin and glucagon. which is the hyperglycemic hormone secreted from pancreas glucagon is correct which is the hypoglycemic hormone secreted from pancreas insulin is correct which hormone will stimulate from the pancreas which hormone will stimulate glycogenesis yes jugal galo correct insulin will promote glycogenesis the formation of glycogen which hormone will promote glycogenolysis Yes, glucagon is correct answer, Galo. Which hormone will promote uptake of glucose and its utilization in the body? Yeah. now coming to the other part related to the pancreas and it's it's about disordered state related to the pancreatic disorder the one which is a very common one diabetes particularly called as a diabetes mellitus now which hormone is concerned with diabetes insipidus by the way another ne another variety of disorder name the hormone which is responsible for diabetes insipidus its deficiency is responsible for diabetes insipidus yes jugal you are right adh deficiency leads to diabetes insipidus Now, insulin deficiency will lead to what is called as diabetes mellitus have a look at it diabetes mellitus prolonged hyperglycemic condition imagine your pancreas is not preparing adequate insulin so after your meal your sugar level is rising but in absence or in a low level of insulin that sugar is not stored in the body your blood sugar level is higher it's called hyperglycemia for long time your blood sugar level remains higher it is called hyperglycemia and later suddenly while excreting you remove your entire glucose which is in excess it is been removed from your body so your kidneys are suffering from pressure of removing excess of glucose kisi ka blood sugar level agar 120 hai तो वो नॉर्मल है किसी का अगर 240 है तो का आप इमेजिन करो किडनी को कितना ज्यादा एक्सेस अमाउंट में जो शुगर है उसको रिमूव करना पड़ेगा किडनीज विल बी चराइज फॉर दैट अच्छा इतना ज्यादा शुगर होने से बीपी में भी प्रॉब्लम आता है ब्लड प्रेशर में भी प्रॉब्लम आता है 
इंक्रीज होता है ब्लड प्रेशर बिकॉज ऑफ सॉल्यूट लेवल राइजिंग ओवर दैर दूसरा किडनीज आर अंडर स्ट्रेस बिकॉज दे हैव टू रिमूव एक्सेस ऑफ ग्लूकोज तो किडनीज कैन हैव अ फंक्शनिंग यू नो प्रॉब्लम्स फेलियर हो सकता है किडनीज में भी ये भी एक इश्यू होता है इतना ज्यादा ग्लूकोज अगर ब्लड में है तो आईज को डैमेज होता है पर्टिकुलरली योर लेंस बिकम्स ओपेक कैटरेक्ट कंडीशन सुना होगा आपने मोटियो मोटिया आईज के लेंस में अगर ज्यादा ग्लूकोज डिपोजिट हो जाता है तो वो ओपेक बन जाता है ट्रांसपेरेंट में से इसको कैटरेक्ट कंडीशन भी कहते हैं सो लुक एट द कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस योर पैनक्रियाज इज नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपर और एल्स इट्स इंसुलिन सिक्रीशन इज नॉट प्रॉपर सबसे इज राइजिंग एंड इट इज नॉट कमिंग डाउन टू नॉर्मल प्रोलॉन्ग्ड हाइपर ग्लाइसेमिया कॉजेज ब्लड प्रेशर चेंजेस causes damage to the islands and can cause cataract and later when removed excess cause of the stress of removing lot of glucose over there these all are the problems over there also jaise symptoms mein kya hota hai to loss of glucose through urine so urine mein zyada glucose hona that is ग्लाइकोसूरिया उस उस डिफेक्ट को कहते हैं ग्लाइकोसूरिया ऑफ कोर्स आपने चैप्टर नंबर 18 किडनी फंक्शंस में लर्न किया है शायद एम आई राइट और बोलिए जी राइट हूं या रॉन्ग है मेरा एजम्पन इज इंट इट दूसरा कीटोन्यूरिया भी आपने लर्न किया है वहां पे बिकॉज some of the glucose is converted into you know i mean lot of fats will be undergoing breakdown in your system fat metabolism bad jata hai apne insulin will promote glucose metabolism insulin absence will promote fat metabolism so fats are metabolized unke breakdown se ketone bodies produce hoti hai acetone and other such ketone bodies are produced to so, कीटोन बॉडीज विल कम आउट इन दूरिन दे आर हार्मुल कंपाउंड एंड प्रेजेंस ऑफ कीटोन बॉडीज इन दूरिन इज कॉल्ड कीटोन्यूरिया दैट इज अनदर प्रॉब्लम लुक एट द चेन इवेंट्स अ ब्रेक फॉर फ्यू मिनट्स दर इज सम डिस्टर्बेंस यू कैन टेक अ ब्रेक इन बिटवीन Fine. So we were discussing about the consequences of uh, the you know diabetes. I said that uh, you know defective pancreas, not getting enough of insulin. In such person, we say diabetes prevails. In this diabetic patient, after the meal, the food is taken, the sugar level is going to rise, but at that time. sugar is not getting stored because the insulin is not there or not working either way so this excess of sugar see there are two problems number one excess of sugar problem so the excess of sugar will be you know causing the blood pressure changes second causes cataract also can cause damage to the kidneys because kidneys have to get rid of this excess of glucose from the blood in a process they get overstressed that's a one problem kidney failure cataract and bp issues the second problem the diabetic patients face is that very interesting one when they had enough of sugar they did not store it because they were lacking insulin action now when they remove the sugar from the blood they suddenly become hypoglycemic unko wo faint ho jate hai unka sugar level suddenly down ho jata hai जिसको कहते हैं 
सीवियर हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक स्टेटस वो जो 120 चाहिए उससे भी कम 30 40 50 पे आ सकता है 60 पे आ सकता है वो 60 से 50 तक उससे कम तो फिर पर्सन की डेथ ही हो जाएगी ऑलमोस्ट तो लुक आइदर वे इट इज अ प्रॉब्लमेटिक सिनेरियो यू नो एक 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 मैं आपको सिंपल एनालॉगी एक्सप्लेन करता हूं केस 1 आपके पास बहुत ज्यादा मनी आया आपने बैंक में डिपॉजिट कर दिया जब आपको चाहिए तब आप उस मनी को यूज कर सकते हो दैट्स अ केस वन दैट्स अ नॉर्मल सीन आगे पेनक्रियाज नॉर्मल है इंसुलिन नॉर्मल है ज्यादा ग्लूकोज आया आपके ब्लड में आफ्टर द फूड इन डे आप उसको स्टोर करके रख लो ब्लड में भी ज्यादा शुगर नहीं और जब चाहिए तो उसको रिलीज कर दो ये नॉर्मल पैटर्न है अब मैं आपको एब नॉर्मल पैटर्न एक्सप्लेन करता हूं आपके पास बहुत सारा मनी आया आप उसको खर्च कर देते हो स्पेंड कर लेते हो वेस्ट में ये किया वो किया अब आपके पास जब एक्चुअली रिक्वायरमेंट है तो वो मनी यू हैव यू नो डिपोजिटेड दैट मनी सो यू डोंट हैव दैट स्टोर्ड मनी नाउ यू आर रनिंग शॉर्ट ऑफ मनी जब आपके पास ज्यादा ग्लूकोज था तब आपने इंसुलिन की एबसेंस में स्टोर नहीं किया आपने उसको एक्सक्रीट कर डाला और अब जब आपको ग्लूकोज चाहिए तो आपके बॉडी में स्टोर ग्लूकोज नहीं है हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू कुड अंडरस्टैंड दिस एनालॉजी इस एनालॉजी को किसने अंडरस्टैंड किया रिगेडिंग द सेंस वोट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग सो इससे ये सब प्रॉब्लम होते हैं अच्छा फ्यू मोर सिम्टम्स यू कैन सी जैसे एक्सेसिव हंगर क्यों होता है मैंने आपको एक्सप्लेन किया आप बोलोगे कि सर हाइपरग्लाइसेमिया में हंगर क्यों होगा हाइपरग्लाइसेमिया के बाद जब एक्सक्रीट हो जाता है ये ग्लूकोज तो सडन हाइपोग्लाइसेमिया स्टार्ट होता है और दैट इज द टाइम व्हेन पर्सन एक्चुअली स्टार्ट्स लुकिंग फॉर ग्लूकोज एंड इज नॉट गेटिंग इट बिकॉज स्टोर्ड ग्लूकोज नहीं है सो so उसको हंगर फील होती है नॉर्मल नॉर्मल पर्सन के कंपेयर में इनको ज्यादा हंगर लगता है एक्सेसिव थर्स्ट क्यों होगा लॉजिकल है नॉर्मल पर्सन डजेंट नीड टू एक्सक्रीट ग्लूकोज इन यूरिन बट डायबिटिक पेशेंट हैज टू डिस्कार्ड सो मच ऑफ ग्लूकोज इन द यूरिन सो फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ यूरिनेशन बढ़ जाती है ज्यादा ग्लूकोज को रिमूव करने के लिए ज्यादा बार यूरिनेशन करना पड़ता है ज्यादा वाटर का लॉस होगा अब जब ज्यादा वाटर लॉस होगा तो डेफिनेटली थर्स्ट बढ़ेगी अब यूरिन डिस्कार्डिंग ज्यादा करते हो तो थर्स्ट भी बढ़ जाती है सेकंड मेजर प्रॉब्लम फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ यूरिनेशन इंक्रीजेस ब्लड प्रेशर इज अफेक्टेड किडनीज कैन फेल किटोन्यूरिया ग्लाइकोसूरिया ये सब प्रॉब्लम अराइज होते हैं इन डायबिटीज मेलाइटिस कैसे इसको कंट्रोल में रखते हैं यू कैन नॉट परमानेंटली क्योर इट ट्रीट इट बट यू कैन हैव अ कंट्रोल एंड हैव अ नॉर्मलाइजेशन टू सम एक्सटेंट नंबर वन इंसुलिन थेरापी करो यू हैव टू टेक द इंसुलिन इंजेक्शन और इंसुलिन टेबलेट्स और टेबलेट्स विच विल प्ले द रोल ऑफ इंसुलिन so that you know your body can store the glucose and can have a normal c apart from that take the proper diet means what to aap apne food mein hi kya kar sakte ho ek alteration jo kar sakte ho do not take the food which is rich in carbohydrates and fats take the food which is rich in protein kya benefit if your food is not providing too much of glucose so naturally your glucose level will not shoot up too much fats bhi zyada hoge to fats ka metabolism hoke ketoneuria hoga na you can avoid glu- glu- glycosuria and ketoneuria by taking food with a lesser amount of carbohydrate and fats and with moong and other such food is more terrible 
The second thing what you can do with your food is take the lesser amount of food for more time. Take the lesser amount of food for more number of times. Is ka kya logic hai? Koi explain kar sakta hai? Taking large amount of food for one time, instead of that, for a diabetic patient, it is advised lesser amount of food for more time. Aap agar 500 100 grams food five times pe khate ho, that is more advisable. Koi uska logic explain karega mujhe? Boliye Rudra. Sir, I take a amount of that one time, then the sugar level will suddenly increase. Excreted, not stored, and when so we you will suffer later on. Yes, sir. Or a shock. थोड़ा थोड़ा फूड खाते हैं तो उसमें क्या बेनिफिट मिलता है सर उसमें ग्लूकोज एकदम हायर लेवल पे नहीं होगा तो फिर यू एक्सक्रीट नहीं होगा और फिर हाइपोग्लाइसेमिक कंडीशन सीवियर नहीं होगी एग्जैक्टली कम खाया है तो शुगर इतना राइज भी नहीं होगा और वो शुगर थोड़ी देर चलेगा बॉडी में और सडनली दूसरा शुगर का लेवल चाहिए तब तक आपने दूसरी बार 100 ग्राम्स आई मीन आई वाज जस्ट गिविंग एन एग्जांपल 100 ग्राम्स इज नॉट प्रिसाइसली द अमाउंट यू गॉट टू टेक बट आई एम एक्सप्लेनिंग इज you should work out that your meal is you know divided into parts that's the way one has to look after proper diet the third thing is exercise 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 whichever form swimming cycling walking some sort of exercise which can burn your extra calories your extra glucose so that your kidneys are not stressed to remove it. It is not getting deposited in your eye lenses. So you got to burn out your sugar. That's the only way you can control the problem of diabetes. So these are the three measures one has to take. Proper diet, proper exercise and proper medication. Meditation nahi, medication. Well, for your information, for, uh, you know, because you are in the field of biology, this much you all must be aware of. And if not, you should be aware of. That normally diabetes, mellitus can be classified into two categories, type 1 diabetes and type 2. Type 1 is a kind of a rare one, less common, I should say, not rare, I should say less common one. It is uh, the one which will develop in the juvenile people, you know, young people, children age with uh, years 20 or less than that. It is an autoimmune disorder. It is the autoimmune disorder. As a It is the one in which your immune system destroys the beta cells of the pancreas. Somehow your immune system, I think I mentioned about autoimmunity, isn't it? When your immune system starts damaging your own body cells. Or usme maina ye aapko explain kiya tha diabetes. If not, let me explain. Our antibodies start damaging the beta cells of pancreas. So without beta cells, no other source of insulin in your body lacks insulin. Simple as that. Second is a very complicated one with respect to the cause and its dealing treatment aspect. Problem is that normally this happens after maturity, the type 2 diabetes. And it is the one in which Either there is a lesser insulin, you know, insulin tolerance is, you know, affected in your system. Your body is producing enough insulin, but that insulin is not working or it is not adequate. You require more insulin than the normal or else your receptors on which insulin is supposed to work and sensitize the cells. 
those receptors are damaged or ineffective so aapka insulin either work nahi kar raha hai ya fir insulin jo prepared hai wo receptors ke sath bind nahi kar raha hai ya fir they are not somehow working properly target cells which are supposed to show the effect are less sensitized to the given insulin so your insulin in sensitivity develops sort of that problem over there आपके बीटा सेल्स वर्क कर रहे हैं प्रॉपर इंसुलिन अमाउंट प्रोड्यूस कर रहे हैं या तो वो इंसुलिन का स्ट्रक्चर ऐसा है कि जो इनइफेक्टिव हो गया है तो अमाउंट इज नॉट एन इश्यू बट इज स्ट्रक्चर इज अफेक्टिंग द सिस्टम या फिर इट्स स्ट्रक्चर इज नॉर्मल इट्स अमाउंट इज नॉर्मल बट द रिसेप्टर विच आर टू बी सेंसिटाइज बाई द इंसुलिन आर नॉट वर्किंग प्रॉपरली दैट्स दर फॉर्म ऑफ इंसुलिन problem the diabetes problem well i conclude the topic of uh, pancreas and i switch over to the next one next is another endocrine gland called adrenal gland adrenal gland over there look at this position point of view just above the kidneys kidneys ke liye word use hota hai renal उनको जॉइंट उनको 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 उनसे एसोसिएटेड ग्लैंड है इसलिए उसको एड रीनल कहते हैं एड मीन्स एड जॉइंट किडनी एड जॉइंट टू द किडनी द एड्रीनल ग्लैंड द पैर ऑफ ग्लैंड्स द पैर ऑफ ग्लैंड्स the adrenal glands are paired one we have a pair of kidneys so uske upar pair of adrenal glands you can see over there one adrenal gland at the anterior end of each kidney so because we have a pair of kidneys we have a pair of adrenal glands over there if you see the histol logy part internal features of this gland you can see that there are two features outer part of the adrenal is called called as cortex outer part it is actually derived from mesoderm jo mesoderm mein se originate hota hai that outer part मीजोडर्मल डेरिवेटिव है ये एक आउटर पार्ट है दैट इज अटेक्स रीजन दिस कॉटेक्स रीजन सीक्रेट्स स्टीरोडल हॉर्मोन यू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट आर स्टीरोड दे आर वन फॉर्म ऑफ लिपिड्स कलेक्टिवली दिस स्टीरोड सीक्रेटेड फ्रॉम द कॉटेक्स आर नोन एज Corticosteroids, they are collectively known as corticosteroids. The inner part of this adrenal gland is known as medulla region, which has been derived from ectoderm. ये जो inner part है वो actually ectoderm में से originate होता है, and it secretes the hormones which are by nature collectively called as amine hormones they are collectively called as catechol amines collectively these are known as catechol amines so that is the overview of this you know biogenic amines or catechol amines is the name given to this hormones okay that is the over, overview of the internal features of histological features of the adrenal gland now you all will give me the information about it which is the outer part of the adrenal gland in a internal sectional view which part is considered as its outer part adrenal cortex which germinal layer gives rise to it origin wise kahan se ye cortex develop hoti hai mesoderm mein se it is originating from mesoderm 
which are the hormones chemical nature wise which are the jugal wrong ectoderm is wrong which are the hormones secreted from the cortex portion of that steroids by nature chemical nature they are steroids because they arise from cortex these are in brief known as cortical steroids or corticosteroids which is the inner region of the adrenal gland histologically inner side of the adrenal that is known as which portion medulla what is the origin point for the medulla ectoderm very nice collectively the hormones secreted from the medulla are known as which hormones medulla is the source of which one biogenic amines also called as catechol amines today we will be able to talk about only one out of this two that is adrenal medulla and its hormones let's talk about it adrenal medulla hormones jugal boli aapko koi question hai sir a adrenal cortex ma thi actx pan release thase na na e pituitary ma thi aave e adrenal कॉर्टेक्स ने स्टिम्युलेट करे पी एडिनल कॉर्टेक्स कॉर्टिकोस्टेरॉइड ने रिलीज करे यू अंडरस्टैंड दैट ओके ओके सर पीट्यूट्री विल रिलीज ए सी टी एच दैट विल स्टिम्युलेट एड्रिनल कॉर्टेक्स एंड इन रिस्पॉन्स द कॉर्टेक्स विल सिक्रेट कॉर्टिकोटेक्स या particular one glucocorticoids yes thank you sir welcome so coming back to this by the way one point regarding this amines now let's talk about biogenic amines secreted from adrenal medulla adrenal medulla as you know it is the inner part of the adrenal gland secreted from or originated from ectoderm it it has two hormones to secrete one is called adrenaline which is also known as epinephrine another one is noradrenaline which is known as norepinephrine norepinephrine simple as that adrenaline and noradrenaline the two different hormones are secreted from the adrenal medulla they have a synergistic effects ab aap confusion nahi karne ka if i ask you that you give me the name of two antagonistic hormones mujhe ek antagonistic hormones ki pair ke bare mein aap information de to pehli pair kaun si hogi ab tak aapne learn kar liya hai if i ask you the antagonistic insulin and glucagon exactly rudra and jugal perfect but if i ask you another pair of such antagonistic hormone maine kal bhi use yes jugal right देखो एंटागोनिस्टिक मींस एग्जैक्टली ऑपोजिट इफेक्ट्स होती है बट एड्रिनालिन और एड्रिनालिन ऑब्लिक एपिनेफ्रिन और नॉर एपिनेफ्रिन मीनिंग इज द सेम दैट वे दिस टू आर द पेयर ऑफ दिस टू आर द हार्मोन्स दिस पेयर ऑफ द हार्मोन्स इज अ पेयर ऑफ सिनर्जेटिक हार्मोन्स मींस व्हाट दोनों की इफेक्ट एक जैसी है ऑपोजिट नहीं है सिनर्जेटिक है कंबाइन इफेक्ट आती है दोनों की दोनों कंट्रीब्यूट करते हैं टूवर्ड्स वन कॉमन इफेक्ट उसको सिनर्जेटिक इफेक्ट कहते हैं सो ये पॉइंट को अंडरलाइन करना है कलेक्टिवली दिस हार्मोन्स आर कैटेकॉल अमाइन उनमें बेसिकली अमाइन ग्रुप होता है सो दैट दे आर इवन नोन एज बायोजेनिक अमाइंस कैटेकॉल ग्रुप की प्रेजेंस भी होती है इस वजह से बिकॉज ऑफ दैट दे आर इवन नोन एज कैटेकॉल अमाइंस एंड अगेन द डेरिवेटिव्स ऑफ टायरोसिन व्हिच अदर हार्मोन्स आर डेरिवेटिव्स ऑफ टायरोसिन
can i say iodothyronines yes got it correct t2 t3 t4 collectively known as iodothyronines all the three are derived from tyrosine similarly epinephrine and norepinephrine of adrenal medulla are also a derivative of tyrosine remember now these two hormones prepare your body for emergency situation stress condition so they are secreted when you are in a stress condition when you are in a emergency condition ऐसी कोई भी कंडीशन होती है जो इसमें आपको स्ट्रेस बॉडी को मिलता है या फिर आप में इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन अराइज होती है दैट विल स्टिम्युलेट योर नर्वस सिस्टम योर नर्वस सिस्टम विल स्टिम्युलेट योर एंडोक्राइन सिस्टम उसमें एडिनल मेडुला एंड दैट विल रिलीज एपिनेफ्रीन एंड नॉर एपिनेफ्रीन इन योर ब्लड स्ट्रीम आप पूरा अंडरस्टैंड करो आपका बॉडी है अगर उस पर स्ट्रेस लगता है या बॉडी इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन को फेस करती है तो वो आपके सीएनएस को अफेक्ट करता है सीएनएस अफेक्ट करता है आपकी एड्रिनल ग्लैंड को और एड्रिनल ग्लैंड सिक्रिएट करती है एपिनेफ्रीन एंड नॉर एपिनेफ्रीन विच विल प्रिपेयर यू टू काउंटर दी स्ट्रेस कंडीशन टू काउंटर दी इमरजेंसी कंडीशन पहले तो मैं आपको एग्जांपल दे दूं कि व्हाट आर स्ट्रेस कंडीशंस ऑब्लिक इमरजेंसी कंडीशंस और ऑब्लिक फाइट और फ्लाइट कंडीशन मैं तीनों का एक एक एग्जांपल दे देता हूं स्ट्रेस कंडीशन स्ट्रेस कंडीशन जैसे परफॉर्मेंस स्ट्रेस है स्टडीज का परफॉर्मेंस स्ट्रेस होता है स्टूडेंट्स पे मार्केटिंग uh, का परफॉर्मेंस स्ट्रेस रहता है वो जो मार्केट में घूमते हैं ना रिप्रेजेंटेटिव्स उन पे या फिर ऑफिस में आप कोई वर्क करते हो या बिजनेस का जो भी स्ट्रेस है इवन नॉइस पॉल्यूशन इज अ स्ट्रेस फॉर पर्सन नॉइस पॉल्यूशन जो होता है ना वो भी एक टाइप का स्ट्रेस होता है तो ये तो था एग्जांपल स्ट्रेस का इमरजेंसी कंडीशन जैसे किसी का एक्सीडेंट हो गया हो या फिर आप बोर्ड एग्जाम में लाइफ में पहली बार जा रहे हो या फिर आप स्टेज परफॉर्मेंस लाइफ में पहली बार कर रहे हो या कोई इंटरव्यू के लिए जा रहे हो या आप का, आपने किसी का आपके घर में किसी की यू नो डेथ का न्यूज आता है रिलेटिव का ये सब कंडीशन जो होती है वो सॉर्ट ऑफ इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन आती है आपको कॉल आया कि सो एंड सो परसेंट ऑफ योर फैमिली इज एडमिटेड बिकॉज ऑफ एक्सीडेंट यू कम टू दी हॉस्पिटल दैट्स इट फोन कट हो गया इज दिस अ नॉर्मल कंडीशन और इमरजेंसी कंडीशन टेल मी इमरजेंसी एग्जैक्टली ये नॉर्मल थोड़ी है कि हाँ चलेगा मैं आ रहा हूं यू डोंट बिहेव लाइक दैट इन दिस इन आर दैट्स कॉल्ड इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन आई होप आई हैव एक्सप्लेन टू यू राइटली and you have understood it what are the different emergency situation jaise aap aap stage pe pehli bar performance ke liye ja rahe ho kya halat hoti hai sweating hota hai shivering hota hai butterflies in your stomach bolne mein thothlahat hoti hai you know you know ye sab emergency situation hoti hai teesra fight or flight condition fight f i g h t fight or flight condition aap imagine karo scooty pe you know morning ka 7 o'clock ka time hai aap apne ghar se nikle you know milk bag lene ya school jaane ke liye apne aap scooty pe ja rahe ho पीछे से दो तीन कुत्ते आपके पीछे आके सडनली बार्क करके आपका पीछा कर रहे हैं डेंजरस डॉग्स है और आपने सुना है कि ये डॉग्स काटते भी है अब आपके पास दो चॉइस होती है वहां पे या तो आप वहां पे खड़े रह के उस पर पत्थर या कुछ और मार के उसको बगाओ दैट इज द फाइट 
that scenario is a fight situation. या तो फिर आप स्कूटी हंड्रेड पे ले जाके इतना भगाओ उसको कि वो पीछे रह जाए और आप आगे निकल जाए इसको कहते हैं फ्लाइट बोलो आपकी लाइफ में ऐसे कोई सीनारियो आते हैं कि नहीं आते जिसको आप फाइट या फ्लाइट कंडीशन कह सकते हो हैव यू अंडरस्टूड व्हाट इज दिस चलो वेरी गुड ना ऐसे में आप नॉर्मल बिहेव कर सकते हो हा या ना बहुत ही कैजुअल हाँ डॉग्स आ रहे हैं मेरे पीछे मैं मुझे फास्ट जाना चाहिए आना चाहिए नहीं जाना चाहिए उसका क्या कॉन्सिक्वेंसिस होगा डू यू एवर थिंक अबाउट ऑल दिस नॉन यू जस्ट ड्राइव फास्ट दैट्स इट नथिंग एल्स या फिर वहां पे खड़े रहे उसको पत्थर उठा के मार देते हो एक इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन मैंने आपको एक्सप्लेन किया एक स्ट्रेस कंडीशन एक फाइट और फ्लाइट कंडीशन एक्सप्लेन किया एक होता है फियर मैं आपको एक एग्जांपल देता हूं हॉरर मूवी देख रहे हो और पीछे से कोई आके आपके ऊपर हाथ रख दे कैसी कंडीशन है आपकी नॉर्मल सब जॉब जाएंगे हाँ चिल्लाओगे आप फ्राइटन कंडीशन फियर का कंडीशन है दूसरा आप बैठे हो और ऊपर से आपके ऊपर वो छिपकली गिर जाए लिजर्ड पता है क्या होगा कॉकरोच या लिजर्ड आ जाए आप पर बॉडी के ऊपर कूदते रहोगे दो मिनट तक तो जंप करते रहोगे दैट इज अ फियर कंडीशन या रात को अकेले है और और कहीं से आवाज आ रही है कब्रस्तान में से जा रहे हो पास हो रहे हो वहां पे रोड पे और नियर बाय कब्रस्तान है और आप रोड पे जा रहे हो कहीं से थोड़ी सी भी आवाज आ जाती है फिर जो होता है आपके साथ स्वेटिंग एंडन देखो ये जो मैंने कंडीशन आपको एक्सप्लेन की जैसे फाइट एंड फ्लाइट वेन यू आर चेस्ड बाई डॉ फियर सिचुएशन वेन यू पासिंग फ्रॉम यू नो ग्रेव एंड साउंड कम्स अप और एल स्ट्रेस कंडीशन कॉन्स्टेंट नॉइज पॉल्यूशन या इमरजेंसी सिचुएशन लाइक सींग द एक्सीडेंट और just you know listening the news of a very close relative passed out as something like that these conditions are not normal conditions in this conditions your body needs a sort of different physiological scenario different physiological status and that status is offered by adrenaline and noradrenaline kaise they increase your heartbeat aap bologe ki heartbeat badhne se kya fayda hoga to blood ka pumping badhega circulation badhega cardiac output badhega okay strength of the contraction will increase number of the heartbeat increase iska se ek hi word hota hai cardiac output increase hota hai cardiac output increases in your system इससे क्या होगा ब्लड सप्लाई ज्यादा होगा इससे क्या होगा बॉडी को ज्यादा ग्लूकोज ज्यादा ऑक्सीजन मिलेगा इससे क्या होगा आपकी मसल्स एक्टिवेट हो जाएंगे टू वर्क जैसे आपको दौड़ना है फाइट और फ्लाइट में या जंप लगाना है या कुछ भी करना है ऐसा एक्शन तो यू नीड एक्स्ट्रा एनर्जी उस टाइम पे आपको मसल्स को ग्लूकोज एंड ऑक्सीजन का सप्लाई इंक्रीज करना है तो डेफिनेटली यू हैव टू इंक्रीज योर कार्डियक आउट इंक्रीजिंग द रेट ऑफ रेस्पिरेशन ब्रीदिंग का रेट इंक्रीज होगा क्यों होगा ग्लूकोज अरे ऑक्सीजन का सप्लाई इंक्रीज करना है ऐसे सीनारियो में आपको अगर दौड़ना है अगर डॉग आपके पीछे और आपको भागना है या कोई एक्टिविटी करनी है तो आपको एक्स्ट्रा पावर चाहिए मसल का एक्टिविटी चाहिए तो योर ब्रीदिंग रेट शुड बी हायर मोर मोर ऑक्सीजन विल बी यूटिलाइज फिर एक और चीज करनी है ब्रेकडाउन ऑफ ग्लाइकोजन ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस करना है कैन यू टेल मी विच थ्री हॉर्मोन्स इन बॉडी प्रमोट ग्लाइकोजन ब्रेकडाउन दैट इज ग्लाइकोजिनोलाइसिस
are you all there or left ha huh, glucagon adrenaline and noradrenaline glucagon normal scenario adrenaline and noradrenaline in emergency situation stress condition stress hormones these are ऐसे में ये ग्लाइकोजन का ब्रेकडाउन करके ग्लूकोज रिलीज कराता है सो दैट सेल्स गेट इनफ एनर्जी फ्रॉम दिस ग्लूकोज नॉट ओनली दैट बट ऑल्सो स्वेटिंग इंक्रीज होता है मेटाबॉलिक रेट बढ़ जाता है तो स्वेटिंग इंक्रीज होगा वहां पे अलर्टनेस इंक्रीज हो जाती है यू नो आप जब आप जब up every time somebody keeps hand at your back do you shout you don't okay but jab aap movie dekh rahe ho dark mein ho aur suddenly koi piche se pakadta hai na to aap ki sensitivity badh jati hai so your alertness and sensitivity increase over that aap 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 normal mein jab chalte ho na to aapko kuch zyada itni fark nahi padti lekin graveyard se raat ke 12 baje ja rahe ho na तो थोड़ी भी आवाज आती है ना तो आपको इमीजिएटली पता चल जाता है योर अलर्टनेस लेवल इंक्रीज इज ट्रिमेंडसली फिर प्यूपिल डायलेशन आपकी जो आईज का प्यूपिल होता है वो डायलेट हो जाता है इसे क्या होता है योर विजुअल फील्ड रेंज इंक्रीजेस यू रिसीव मोर लाइट तो ये एक वन ऑफ द इंक्रीज रिसेप्टिविटी ऑफ लाइट के लिए प्यूपिल डायलेशन होता है पिलोर एक्शन होता है रेजिंग ऑफ हेयर्स गुज बम्स बोलते हैं ना ऐसा हो जाता है कंडीशन तो ये सब नॉर्मल कंडीशन नहीं है इसमें इवन लिपिड का ब्रेकडाउन प्रमोट होता है जिसको लिपोलाइसिस कहते हैं एंड प्रोटीन का ब्रेकडाउन जिसको प्रोटीओलाइसिस कहते हैं अल्टीमेटली ये दोनों हार्मोन हाइपर ग्लाइसेमिक है प्रोटीन ब्रेक करके अमाइनो एसिड्स ब्रेक करके उसमें से ग्लूकोज लिपिड ब्रेक करके फैटी एसिड्स रिलीज करके उसमें से ग्लूकोज ग्लाइकोजन ब्रेक करके उसमें से ग्लूकोज ये अल्टीमेटली शुगर का लेवल राइस कराते हैं सो दैट यू फील एनर्जेटिक स्ट्रेंथ एंड ये होते हैं एपिनेफ्रीन एंड नॉर एपिनेफ्रीन हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू अंडरस्टैंड दिस Do you guys understand about this? What I have explained to you. Now I could explain only up to the medulla part of the adrenal gland, secreting biogenic amines. This includes two adrenaline or and noradrenaline. Yeah, फिर दूसरा name है उनका epinephrine and norepinephrine, collectively also known as catecholamines. just like the adrenaline they are also derived from tyrosine and they are secreted in a special condition such as the frightened fear condition or else fight or flight condition or else stress condition or else emergency condition of the body so even identified as the stress hormones basically they increase the cardiac output heart beat breathing rate sweating alertness pupil dilation these are the impacts of effects of adrenaline and nor adrenaline now i conclude the lecture with this tomorrow hope to see you all in a normal regular lecture that is 9:30 uh, onwards when you join and hope to continue with the same and next whatever topics are there we will see them i hope you will increase the participation it's not about the participation in which sense that those who are participating are participating anyways i want more number of students to participate in this in in this lectures unless you interact you will not develop interest unless you develop interest you will not be able to learn the subject and topic properly so my humble request and suggestion to all my dear students please increase your participation in our sessions in our lectures
at least make sure that every day you give answers of two to three questions minimum. That's a minimum I am setting over there. See you in the next lecture. Leaving you a little early, five, 10 minutes. Enjoy. <laughs>